I wanted to comment very briefly on the mysteries that we celebrate today, which are three in particular. First of all, it is the Feast of the Purification of our Blessed Mother. Second is the presentation of our Lord in the temple. And third, we have the ceremony of blessing of candles. Now, this is the only time of the year that candles are blessed in a solemn way like this. And the reason why the candles are blessed in such a solemn way is because of the importance of candles, which are a symbol of our Lord. The, the wax is a symbol of our Lord's body, his human nature. The wick, which is enclosed by the wax, is a symbol of his human soul. And the flame, when the candle is lit, is a symbol of the divinity of our Lord. So candles form a very important part of the liturgy. Nowadays, when we have electric lighting, we don't think of it as much, but think back to the time before there was electricity and electric lighting, candles were so much more important. And candles are so important and so significant for the Mass, and you probably attended Mass when you notice that I've had to do this. If a candle goes out, I stop where I'm at in Mass until I get it lit or replaced, because we have to have two candles, two blessed beeswax candles lit for every Mass. And then, of course, a high Mass, more candles. So candles are very important, and I hope you were following along in your missal the beautiful prayers of the Church uh, regarding the candles. The reason why we bless candles on this feast day, or at least this is the common belief, because it's such an ancient ceremony, we don't know all of the reasons why the church so many centuries ago chose this day to bless candles, but it is most likely because of the words of the Nunc Dimittis, the canticle of Simeon, when Mary and Joseph came into the temple with the Christ child. And he said those words, Now thou dost dismiss thy servant, O Lord, according to thy word in peace, because my eyes have seen thy salvation a light of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. So he referred to the Christ child, to our Lord, as a light of revelation. And our Lord referred to himself as the light of the world. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And he who follows me does not walk in darkness. And so because of those words of Simeon, we bless the candles. But let's reflect briefly on the two mysteries, the double mystery that we meditate upon in the fourth joyful mystery of the rosary, the mystery of the presentation. It is both a feast of our Lord and of Our Lady because the Christ child was presented to God and Our Lady submitted to a rite of the Old Testament called a purification. So a brief comment on each of these. First of all, imagine the Christ child, because we know that Jesus, in his human nature, had the full use of his reason, even as an infant. So 40 days after his birth, according to the law, the parents took the child to the temple to present him to God. But imagine the thoughts of Christ, the Christ child, entering into his father's house for the first time as an infant and how he adored his heavenly father. And an interesting thing is that the parents would present their children to the temple and the priest would take the child in his arms and then they would have to purchase back the child by an offering because it was symbolic of the fact that children belong to God first and foremost and that he entrusts his children to the parents, that they will raise the child or the children and give them back to God, so that the parents will raise them in such a way that the children will live their faith, and so this way the, ch the children are being given back to Almighty God. And so parents always think about that, that the children God has given them are a sacred trust, and they really belong to God. Now certainly, of course, the parents have the rights over the child to raise, to form those children. They belong to the parents, not to the state, not to the public schools or anyone else, but they belong to the parents. But ultimately, they belong to Almighty God. 
So that thought comes out with the presentation. And also, Our Lady submitted to a rite from the Old Testament called a purification. And what was behind that is that when a woman gave birth, she had to remain in seclusion, if it was a boy, for 40 days. She couldn't go out into the public market and so forth. Now, certainly, a woman giving birth has incurred no moral stain or guilt, but there was a legal stain in the law of Moses, which was a very rigid law. So 40 days remaining in seclusion after the birth of a boy, twice that for the birth of a girl. And so Our Lady, at the presentation of the Christ child, she also went to the temple at the conclusion of that period to give the offering for her purification. And then prayers were said, a sacrifice was made, and then the woman was considered now to be purified. And in this we see Our Lady's love for the law and her humility. Because Our Lady had no obligation to submit to that law. Our Lord was born in an entirely miraculous manner. Our Blessed Mother was a virgin before, during, and after the birth of her son. She had not even, obviously, no moral stain, as Our Lady was conceived without sin and was always pure and immaculate, but she also had not contracted the legal stain of the Mosaic Law. And yet she submitted to this rite of purification out of her love for the virtues of purity and humility, and because Our Lady in her humility did not want to be noticed. She did not want to stick out. She wanted to pass for just another of the Jewish women. And so she did what all of the other mothers would do, and submitted to that rite of purification. So we admire the wonderful virtues in our Blessed Mother, and also her obedience, wanting to do what the commandment uh, imposed, even though it did not obligate her. So these are things that we should reflect upon when we pray the fourth joyful mystery of the Rosary, and also always to remember the beauty and the significance of candles that symbolize our Lord, who is the light of the world, and if we follow his teachings, we do not wander in darkness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.